Hey there, did you know that the Soviet Union was once planning to colonize Venus and claim it all for itself? It all started back in 1761 when Mikhail Lomonosov noticed that the second planet from the sun had an atmosphere, and a rather dense one. Based on this, it was concluded that the planet was entirely covered with water and therefore suitable for life. The similarity of Venus and the Earth in external parameters were also noted. Its composition, mass and size, which could not but give rise to thoughts about its colonization. A few centuries and a revolution later, Soviet scientists discovered that the resources of Venus were of great interest. Deposits of uranium and other useful chemicals could probably be found on it. In addition, due to its proximity to the Sun, Venus could develop new techniques for energy production. Due to this, in 1960, the Soviet scientists seriously thought about making Venus a Russian planet. Moreover, it was at this time that American scientists were studying Mars. Soviet space specialists were tasked with overtaking the Americans and being the first to send a man to Venus. This is how the Venus program was started. The first Soviet probes sent to Venus were only tasked to fly past it and collect some information about its atmosphere. It was only in 1967 that the Venera 4 apparatus entered the planet's atmosphere and was almost immediately destroyed by the enormous pressure. Until this moment, nothing was known about the planet. In 1970, the Venera 7 probe, having overcome the clouds of Venus, descended to Venus's surface. Due to communication problems, however, the device was only able to transmit to scientists the temperature on the planet. The newer probes they built were better adapted to the conditions of the surface of Venus and they were able to transmit more data. Scientists quickly discovered that the planet did not have its own magnetic field. The temperature on the surface was 464 degrees Celsius, or 867 degrees Fahrenheit for my American viewers, and the pressure on the planet was 92 times greater than that on Earth. So how were the Soviets going to colonize Venus after learning about these extreme conditions? As I mentioned earlier, before the Venera 4 probe visited the planet, scientists believed that its surface contained an ocean of water, and where there was water, there is a potential for life. The first plan was to terraform Venus. Soviet rockets would drop devices with tons of green algae onto its surface which would clear the atmosphere from the large amount of carbon dioxide that had accumulated over there for a few billion years. Yes, the first plan was to introduce photosynthesis on steroids. However, having learned that there were no oceans on Venus and that the clouds of Venus were theoretically suitable for life, Soviet scientists began to develop a new plan for flying houses. The new plan was to launch large airship stations filled with gas into the atmosphere. Inside these airships, there were plans to build houses for researchers, lay out gardens, and open laboratories. So how would the living conditions be like? Well, the Venera 4 probe recorded that at an altitude of 60 kilometers above the surface, temperatures would only reach minus 25 degrees Celsius or minus 14 degrees Fahrenheit for my American viewers. This is, of course, quite cold, but still bearable if you compare it with the surface. The pressure in this zone of the cloud layer was also very similar to that on Earth. It is worth noting that the clouds there, like ours on Earth, consist of tiny ice crystals, so there would be tiny amounts of water there in a snowy form. All of this would make the living conditions quite comfortable, even compared to the Moon and Mars. Astronauts, for example, would not need a spacesuit. A simple light mask with a unit for producing oxygen chemically would suffice. Of course, the main inconvenience was that there no, was no hard surface like that on Earth. But the astronauts would most likely not need it. There were assumptions that the first colonists would live on these airship stations that drifted. Carbon dioxide is 1.5 times heavier than air, so a light shell with air inside would still float in the carbon dioxide atmosphere and it wouldn't sink. This picture depicting the plan designed by Soviet engineers from a Soviet space magazine in 1971 shows how these flying cities would look like. The airship would be a platform of gigantic size, surrounded by a spherical shell consisting of several layers of synthetic film, between which gas composites would circulate, which would keep the airship itself afloat. The shell would be transparent and you would be able to see the whitish sky of the planet. At the bottom of the platform was the living quarters, warehouses and laboratories, and above them was land where cosmonauts could grow agricultural crops. Alas, it was later research on Venus that destroyed these plants. In 1978, the Venera 11 and Venera 12 probes arrived on the planet, which recorded a noticeable number of electrical discharges in the planet's atmosphere. Four years later, in 1982, the 14th Venera probe flew to Venus, giving even worse news. Extreme winds were observed at the same altitude where Soviet cloud cities were planning to be built. The windows were so powerful that the airships would simply be torn to pieces. However, the 14th Venera probe did at least manage to take this picture before it melted after 57 minutes. Even though the Soviet plans to colonize Venus would ultimately fail, humanity still learned a lot about Venus. 
Although the concepts from the 1970s seem crazy today, it would still be possible to create the right conditions for a habitable zone on Venus given the right technologies which the Soviets lacked for the time. Whether we will see this happen in our lifetimes or not, humanity will eventually return to Venus to explore its vast landscapes. Good night.